the artist behind Narwhal Carousel Co. and I've got a lot going on in my studio this week so I wanted to bring you along and show you what I've been working on. I first wanted to share what I've been working on for my sticker shop. So I'm getting ready for my spring and Easter sticker launch this weekend with my new sticker sheets. And so I have a mix of spring, Easter, and then this one for example, it is kind of springy but this is probably one that will stay up all year. I have a cottage court Easter one. I'm obsessed with this one. I think it might be one of my favorites from this new sticker launch I'm working towards. But I made these up last week after kind of doodling them in the evenings. This one, for example, is like a cleanup of a sticker sheet I released last year and I'm bringing it back for Easter. I've had the sticker portion of my shop for just over a year. So I started it in kind of fall winter of 2021 and it's now spring of 2023. So a lot of my spring sticker sheets were some of my early ones and I just changed some of them to sort of fit in with my current style, which just basically meant changing the logo on some of them and then changing the lettering on some of them. But I'm really happy with how they look in their new versions. And then obviously some of these are new that I drew this year. That's one of the things I love about the sticker shop is that I can just keep adding on and changing as time goes on. And I can also use sticker sheets from the previous year. But speaking of changing things, I wanna show you what it looks like when I actually go in and change a sticker sheet from an older version to a newer version. So these are not part of my spring launch, but I just wanted to share some of the sticker sheets I've updated recently just because I think it's interesting to do. So here's a really simple edit. All the stickers stayed pretty much the same, but I changed the logos. So my brand name was up here in my handwriting and I changed it to the font to match a bunch of my other sticker sheets. And so that's just the simple change I made. So the stickers are exactly the same. I'll just be phasing this one out for this one just as time goes on and they sell out because there isn't a big difference other than the fact that I wanted it to be more cohesive with my newer sticker sheets. So similar style to like this one, which is a brand new one. And then here is another one that had a minor change. So these were sticker sheets from last spring when I was really trying to figure out my cohesive style. And all I did on this one is just move the stickers up, make the brand name the same for the new version, and then to sort of balance out where the new logo was and the fact that there's less writing there now, I just added a couple more of the butterfly stickers just to have a little bit of something extra to fill in the new blank space I made. So again, I'll be phasing in this one once the old version sells out. And then this was a really early sticker sheet for me, my sweet like honey sticker sheet. And what I did on this one was just kind of update some of the colors and coloring, sort of tweak them. So you can tell I went with a more saturated, brighter yellow on the new version. And again, just change the logo and branding. This is one of those ones where I don't think the new version is obviously like that much different or better than the old version. I just wanted it to sort of match my new style a little bit better while keeping most of the same lines. And then I have one sticker sheet that did go through a major change when I went through and updated this spring, which is this cottage core sticker sheet. The old version of this cottage core sticker sheet is actually one of my best sellers in my shop, but it was one of the earlier ones I made and I'm not unhappy with it, but I mainly wasn't happy with the amount of like awkward placing and blank space. It was an acquired skill to learn how to plan out sticker sheets and I wasn't great at it at first. And again, I don't think it's that bad, but the space next to this cow just bugs me. So I did go through and update it. So here's the new version and you can tell, yes, there's still blank space, but it just looks more cohesive overall. And I was able to add extra things in you can just tell I've cleaned up what the different things look like. So you can tell on those little ducks, on the bees, on the strawberries. And again, like the placement is looking exactly right, but I do think it's just a more balanced look if you almost look at the sticker sheet like an art piece, which sounds silly, but I did want like the colors brighter and 
the layout to be better, so I went in and made those changes. And so it still has the same spirit of the original sticker sheet, but I just think the new version is a little more reflective of what my style looks like now because this was one of my earliest sticker sheets. So I'm excited to phase this new version in, and I just think it's a cute new look without actually making the sticker sheet very much different. So those are my updated sticker sheets, and I'm not really launching them with the spring sticker sheets. I'm just adding them in as the old version sell out so that I can just have the updated version. And again, I don't even know if anybody who shops in my store is even going to notice. I mostly just did this because I wanted to do it. Forgive the less than aesthetic background, but now that I've shown you all these, I'm going to go ahead and put them in my sticker box. I will try to remember to link this below because I absolutely love it. It's four four by six index cards, but because all my sticker sheets are four by six, this box works perfect for organizing them. So I have them semi-alphabetically in the front. So just the different ones. So I'll put away some of these versions that I have. So that's the front is the sticker sheets that I keep out all year. And then this section in the back is just whatever seasonal sticker sheets I'm currently selling. So these, these ones for spring are currently in the back. And if I decide to keep some of the spring ones as a full year fixture, then I'll phase them into the alphabetical section. And I think that will work really well. So let me put these away real quick. There we go, all organized, and the nice little clear lid keeps them safe for dust until I ship them out. Then the other thing I have going on today is painting in progress. So, I have the animals sorted out by what their eye colors are going to be. I found that like helps me visualize how my collection is going to look. So like these ones are gonna have green eyes, these ones are gonna have a green brown eye, these ones are gonna have brown eyes, and then this section is going to have blue slash sort of gray eyes. And these are the animals I was sculpting for the past several weeks, and I've just started in on painting them. So for example, I've painted the eye whites on every single little one of these critters, but on animals like this chipmunk that need more patterns, I've gone in and added patterns on them. This chipmunk also is one of the animals that I used chalk pastels on, so I went in and used clear sealant to keep the pastels from rubbing off while I work on the painting. And also, I just hate the feeling of the chalk pastels, so like sealing them in so I don't have to touch them and I can just touch a nice sealed surface instead is a must for me. And then I was thinking about this while I was painting, but I do two different type of spots. So this little goat has chalk pastel spots that I put on him before baking, and they have like that very soft, almost fur looking look. And then this hamster, I baked him pure white clay and then painted the spots on. And it just has such a different look between the two of them. The really soft spots and then the painted spots, and I actually don't know which I like better. I just kind of do it how I'm feeling at random for each animal. So I'm kind of thinking, do I need to try the chalk pastel spots on hamsters in the future? I think it might be cute, especially since most hamsters aren't as spotted as this. They really just are cream with the orange on their heads and down their backs. So maybe I'll try that in the future. But I do think both this flower hat hamster and this goat are coming along cute. I'm, both, I'm gonna give both of them some brown eyes, so that's something I do need to start in on. My plan for these has been to first just get the details painted onto them, and then I'll go in on their eyes. Unless I get bored of painting details, and then I'll paint their eyes as a break. But like these sweater geese need some little patterns painted onto their sweaters. And so do these quilt critters. In fact, let me show you the plan I made for doing the quilt critters because I think it will help you visualize what I'm trying to get done with them. So forgive how dirty my iPad is, but what I went in and did is take an approximation of all the different colors that are on the quilt critters and put them into Procreate so I could sort of visualize a very rough sketch of what I wanted to paint on each color to keep all of them cohesive and this is what I came up with. So a few different flowers, strawberries, and clouds, and I think it'll be super, super cute in cottagecore. And then I might also use some of these patterns to paint onto those geese I showed you because I think these would be cute sweater patterns as well. And then I also want to paint something, I think, onto these teapots. And then I also have teacups for these little mice to sit in. And I think a cute little pattern, maybe kind of like the teapots on my sticker sheets, might be cute. 
but I haven't quite come up with them yet. I may paint all the animals first and then go in and sort of figure out what I want on the teapots, if anything at all, because they already are really cute, just as they are. So I was going to just keep painting my clay, but actually I think while I paint the clay, I need to make some stickers on my Cricut because some of my sticker packs, specifically my Goose for Every Week sticker pack is low in stock. So I'd like to make some more and kind of like run the Cricut while I paint. Running the Cricut while I do clay is terrible because it can get like fuzz and stuff on my hands that then gets into the clay, but painting is a little better. So I'm going to do that and see how it goes. So I'll swap you around and show you how I make a sticker sheet. Okay, so I have design space open on my laptop and I'm going to search for the sticker sheet I want to make because I've set up a ton of them. So I want to make my goose sticker sheets today. So I'm going to go in and grab the one I want. I'm going to start with her spring styles sticker sheet. So this is for my like geese for every season type sticker pack. I'll have to insert photos of it. But what I'm gonna do is go in and make that now. So I have my sticker paper. I just keep it in literally the box it shipped in from next to my printer. And this is an Epson EcoTank 2803. And that's just what I use to print all my stickers. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm gonna insert the sticker paper in the back of the printer behind my laptop. I just put the sticker paper in one sheet at a time just cause I don't make a ton of stickers. So what I'm gonna do is get this started. So literally you just start by making the sticker sheet. So you send it to your printer in design space. I turn the bleed off because I make my own cut lines and then I always use the system dialog because on my laptop I have custom print settings and if you just print it off Cricut, it doesn't use your custom print settings, at least not on my laptop. And I want it to be the highest quality possible. So I have it set up as my own custom high quality settings. That's why I use the system dialog in Cricut. So I'm just gonna go ahead and print it. And then I'm just gonna line up the stickers on my Cricut mat. You might ask Casey, why is there washi tape on your Cricut mat? And it's because it helps me line it up in different spots. I use the sort of Cricut trick where you have the Cricut go around multiple times in order to cut out the backing of your sticker sheet. I know you've probably seen it on like TikTok or YouTube, but I do that and I find if I just have it go in one spot forever, so if I were to line it up across the top, it makes it so that there are lines cut into my mat and inevitably that's going to happen anyway. However, I would much rather have it staggered over time so the lines don't get too deep because I find when the lines cut into the mat get too deep, then my stickers start getting warped. So I use different widths of washi tape to stagger the sticker sheet while still lining it up because I find if my sticker sheet is lined up crooked then I have more issues with my stickers being offset and having issues so using this little trick has really helped me stagger where they are on the sheet and not be offset.
happy Thursday. It is the rainiest and gloomiest of days here in Oregon. And I have on one of my polar bear sweatshirts that I made. I'm trying to cycle in some of my new sweatshirts just for wearing for work and things because the ones I have been wearing are just getting very gross and destroyed. You really get a perspective on that when you're making studio vlogs and wearing the same three thrifted sweatshirts every day, but I'm just trying some of my own designs so I have something cute to wear when I'm working. So all I've been doing today, all day, is working on painting eyes onto my critters. When I showed them to you yesterday, they didn't have their eyes on at all, but yesterday and today I've been working on painting them all day. So they're coming along, but they still have a long way to go. And then I also need to organize the goose stickers I was working on yesterday and make them into the packs so I can put the sticker packs in my shop. So we'll get started on that. So goose sticker packs are just waiting to be organized. When I make my sticker sheets, I have a little extra space on the sticker paper that I use to make freebie stickers. So I'll organize these out as well. Didn't make a ton, but I did make enough stickers for a couple more packs. I like to go through and make sure they don't have too many imperfections on it. Obviously handmade stickers, they're not going to be completely perfect but I like to make sure they're not wildly off. For these sticker packs, each pack gets one sheet of each of the seasons, and then it gets a sheet of like extra stickers that go with it. Then I made a few extra of the spring style sticker sheets, just because spring is gonna be the next season I'm doing. So I know some people might just purchase this particular sheet individually rather than in the pack on some of the fall and winter sheets. I have some of my Christmas freebies that were already on there and I always think it's funny and kind of like heartwarming to be making these fall and Christmas minis in March. It's just cute because they're on there and I probably just will save these for next fall and winter. But I went in on Shopify and updated the inventory for the Goose for Every Week sticker packs just so I have a few more in stock. And again, I didn't add in a ton of them because I feel like how often is that particular sticker pack gonna sell when it's not the beginning of the year? Though of course I could be wrong because when I first put them up in December, they did not sell as well as later on getting into 2023. So once again proving I don't often know what's going to sell in my shop when, but I'm happy to have those back in the shop because they are some of my favorites the little sweet little geese, Maisie and her outfits. So really what I'm gonna do for the rest of the day is probably just continue painting the eyes on these critters. They are slugging along. I would love to have their eyes fully painted by the end of tomorrow, Friday, but I think that's like a little bit of a stretch. So I'm just gonna do what I can, and if I don't get the rest of their eyes painted by tomorrow, it's really not a big deal. I'm ahead enough on them. It just would be nice to do. studio tent lights to show the painting I just did and now I wish I had brought the light in earlier because I can actually see my work surface but here is all the progress on their eyes so far um, obviously I still have to paint the little white eye shines on that I always paint but I have let's see five six seven eight animals that have their eyes on except for the eye shines and about 40 animals that still need their eyes painted on but that's all right i'll get to it this is one of those critters that's going to have the quilt patterns painted on but i did decide to start with her eyes first and i'll get around to the quilt patterns eventually this is the light tent situation right onto my workspace because it is so gloomy and rainy today
vlog here. It's so gloomy and dark and I'm really just gonna be painting. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one.